This is not Minecraft, and at first glance it may look familiar, but if you've played Minecraft, it's easy to tell this is not it. I mean, look at it. And I know this is nothing new with quite a few free clones of Minecraft being created over the years that are just games that look promising on top but are just bare bone cash grabs with there being a few outliers that still just shove ads in your face all the time. Bro, can, can you not, can you not do that? Can you not do, please stop. And when I was younger I played some of these games and I wanted to revisit them just to make sure I wasn't being a hater without knowing that they were actually bad and and like I remember, they immediately started hitting me with ads, and once you actually get into the game, the lack of content and polishing is more than obvious. Oh god. Bro! Chill out, let me- let me play. Okay. Alright, I'm gaming. I'm slowly descending into the world. What? How did I do that? Sponge tree? So yeah, the sponge tree was probably the most interesting thing I saw, with the rest of the game just being randomly generated landscape with no caves, no vegetation, no animals, and no b- Anyways, what I was trying to say is that this game is really bad. Like, I, I don't know who is playing this, but the fact that these have been around since I was like seven has me very suspicious. In fact, actually, let me let me go look at the ratings on this game. Okay, that is a lot m different than I thought it would be. Um, let me just there we go really quickly and i'm hating on these games so hard because they're just blatant copies of minecraft trying to find some form of revenue which is just like go do something better with your life like what are you what are you doing but on the other side of the spectrum there are some games that may have had a huge inspiration from minecraft but that's just it they never really did anything to copy it like this game which i now just realized is the first time that i'm saying this name vintage story is an extremely good example of a voxel based game that looks a lot like minecraft but isn't and i want to share why i feel it works so well and doesn't just feel like you're playing a ripoff of minecraft so to give this game a quick little description for simplicity's sake, it's pretty much just more realistic Minecraft, with certain things like the physics of the game being a lot more realistic, or there being a lot more intricate little details to progression, kind of like RLCraft. And if you've ever played Minecraft, I'm sure you can tell the difference. Now, a few of my favorite things this game does that I've gotten to so far because I've only played so much of the game and I know there's a lot more that I can do that I probably haven't even messed with yet, but it's the tool making mechanics and being able to prospect, which is just finding specific minerals in the ground if you don't know what prospecting is. I, I didn't know either before I learned. These two things alone make the game incredibly enjoyable, as you can probably guess that these aren't the two only things in the game, with there being a huge catalog of items in order to be able to make everything about the game just that little bit more realistic than Minecraft. Like for example, in Minecraft you can just go punch down a tree, find a cave, and most likely you'll find some iron and boom, you're in the iron age in like 10 to 20 minutes. And yes, this is me playing right now, and yes, I did find iron in like 10 minutes, and then literally like a minute or two later found diamonds, enough to make a diamond pickaxe, and that's pretty much, I feel like this proves my point pretty well, it's, it's not that hard to get some pretty good shit in Minecraft really quickly. With Vintage Story, that would be impossible, because in order to find an amount of ore that is actually decent, you would need to be able to prospect, and then you would need a pickaxe in order to mine that ore, and in order to get that pickaxe, you'd need a bunch of little chunks of ore on the surface, because you can't just make a stone or a wood one, I don't even know how that would work, and I don't know why Minecraft allows that, but vibes. And then, in order to make those chunks of ore into a pickaxe, you need to get some clay and do some pottery, and then after you get that pickaxe, you're probably gonna need some, like, sticks and other tools that you're gonna have to nap out of flint in order to even keep you alive to be able to do all this. And speaking of that, you're probably gonna need a shelter and food, which in Minecraft, that would be easy peasy, no problem. But anyways, it gets really complicated really quickly to do something that in Minecraft would be very, very easy. And if it doesn't paint a picture a little bit of why there are totally differences in this game, then I, uh, I don't know what will. Now I'll explain prospecting ore in a second, but the reason I like forging so much is because it's honestly very rewarding and relaxing. 
And what I mean by that is it doesn't feel too easy, like throwing some ore in a furnace and just starting to make tools out of chunks of metal. But it also doesn't feel like you're taking hours out of your day to forge a tool as it probably would in real life. And it's this in-between that gives you a nice reward, but is relaxing and not straining in any type of a way. Plus, just sitting here in my little forge and hitting my hammer on some metal is always fun, and will never not be. And the prospecting falls into the same categories of rewarding and relaxing, where instead of just randomly going out into the world and trying to get lucky finding ore, like in Minecraft, in Vintage Story you can use a prospecting pickaxe to scan the ground for certain minerals within the area and slowly follow the trail until you get the highest rating you can find, and then when you do that, it's very rewarding, because it might take a while to get there, but once you've found a vein and mine down into it, then you will have more than enough material for a while. And because this game has a very calm and pretty aesthetic, this process is very relaxing. Well, unless you start getting chased by a bear. That shit is terrifying sometimes. <laughs> And going insane can be terrifying too. And if you're wondering what I mean by that, I'm sure some of you have noticed this bluish turquoise cog down here. That is basically my sanity. And if it gets low enough, these little gobligees called drifters start spawning. And alone they may not do too much damage, but if you start dealing with like three or more of these guys, it's game over. At least all the way up to copper tools, because I haven't really made anything better than it yet. Or better than copper tools, but... Even with my copper tools, I will get shit on if there's like three or four of them. So, um, it's been like two weeks since I've edited this because I've been busy with trying to get into a new job while also working on my old one and dealing with school and just trying to enjoy myself. But I thought really quickly I'd just say something about my Minecraft PS1 mod video that has been doing absolutely ridiculous i i had no idea it would do so good the the, the fact that it has over a hundred thousand views while i am recording this is absolutely wild to me and i just like to say thank you so much for enjoying my content and uh, also yes hello this is me um i thought that i would also put this in really quickly to say that i am now actually using a god damn it come here a microphone if you can hear um don't hate on this microphone i know it's not that expensive but uh it's my brother's and i'm not using this one anymore uh that's pretty much my big thing is this was the microphone that i was using before and there was a little bit of hate there and i i also hated it because it's this i mean look at it it's not going to be that great and i also have if i can get over here to it oh this i mean this is just this part of it but it's just a blue yeti microphone and i need to fix it um just gently put this back right here anyways let me continue with the video that i'm doing right now so one of my bigger issues i've had with the game isn't even the gameplay but that if you want to play it you really can't buy the game you have to pay for a subscription for one month worth of game time and at first the payment is 21 dollars, and after that it's 11 dollars each month so that gets a little pricey and i could see how someone might not want to pay that fee to continue playing the game even though i probably will because i want to make another 100 days video in vintage story which i guess it would be like a 200 days in vintage story if i continued it which is also in the works right now i'm editing that at the moment so if you're interested in that stay tuned because that should be my next video my storage is looking a little full right now and i kind of need to make that video and get rid of all that footage Anyways, that was my little review on Vintage Story. If it looks interesting to you, trust me, I've only shown the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what this game has to offer, and you should check out some of the other content on this game. And personally, I do recommend getting this game, because it's definitely kind of pricey, but it's original, and I've had a lot of fun exploring some of the mechanics that this game has to offer. And if you're playing alone, that month of being able to play is definitely enough time to be able to decipher whether or not you want to continue playing or just have enough fun in the moment and then stop playing. Uh, anyways, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's going to wrap it up. 